Hi, welcome back. This is Earth in Space. Um, today we're going to be talking about Earth's motions. This is section 9.1. And the first thing we need to know is some of the names for some of the objects that um, are in space. And the first object is called a celestial object. A celestial object is anything that's outside of Earth's atmosphere. So anything we see in the sky that's not part of Earth. Some examples of this would be the sun and some other stars, planets, moons. What is the celestial sphere? Um, the celestial sphere is an imaginary sphere that all objects in the sky appear projected. So if you look outside, everything you see um, that goes around in every direction, that would be the celestial sphere. Um, and that's where we see stars and we can project them onto this imaginary sphere. Apparent motion is when objects appear to be moving, even if they actually aren't. So if you imagine yourself um, driving along in a car and you're passing objects, it looks like car, uh, the trees are moving, it looks like other cars are moving backwards compared to you. Um, they're, the way things seem to move because you're actually moving. So you're riding in a car, you see some things moving past your window, and they can appear to be moving when it's actually you moving. This also happens sometimes when you're sitting on a train, and another train goes by, and it can make you feel like you're moving different in a different direction than you actually are. That's apparent motion. And this we relate to mostly the sun. As we know, we're revolving around the sun, and we're rotating each day, and we see the sun moving through the sky over the course of the day, when really we're the ones who are moving. Real motion is when the objects are actually moving, so it's different than apparent motion. So we need to talk about altitude of stars again. Um, we talked about altitude early in the year, and altitude is an angular height above the horizon. So again, if we point straight up, um, from where we're standing, we'd be looking at the zenith, and if you recall, this would be a 90 degree angle, right? So we measure the altitude on the celestial sphere. This is the celestial sphere, so you can see the observer standing right here in the middle. So if he looks straight up, this would be 90 degrees from his um, point of view, with this being the horizon, okay? So here, this is the typical... Um, an example of the celestial sphere that we use on the regents. Um, you can see the little man standing here and uh, directly in front and behind him is zero, which is the horizon, and directly above him is 90 degrees, which is the zenith. So if we look at this star right here, we want to know what that um, altitude is. And this altitude looks like it's about halfway between the uh, horizon and the zenith, so this would be at about 45 degree altitude. These are the three um, sun paths that occur in New York State, which we'll be working with more um, in a couple days. But again, you could see um, it's showing from our perspective the sun rising and then setting. And this is what you see over the course of a day. Um, for the three different main paths, which is in winter, the equinoxes, and summer. So we'll talk more about that. You can see in New York State that none of them ever reach zenith. So this shows the angular height that they reach at noon on those th uh, four special days. Rotation. So one thing that gets mixed up very often is rotation versus revolution. So when we think of rotation, we think of Earth spinning like a top. Of, um, on its axis. Earth rotates from west to east in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, one day is 24 hours. This is the length of Earth's rotation. That's how long it takes. How do we calculate the rate of rotation? So we want to figure out Earth's rate of rotation. We go to our trusty reference table to the rate of change formula. Um, that it, it rotates one full spin, 360 degrees, in 24 hours. So Earth's rate of rotation is that special number. It's coming back 15 degrees per hour. So some proofs of Earth's rotation. How do we know that Earth rotates? One is day and night, sunrise and sunset. The Coriolis effect, remember um, the ocean currents and the winds curve due to Earth's rotation. That's the Coriolis effect. Then we have the Foucault pendulum. So the Foucault pendulum, we're gonna, I'm going to show you a little video on this. And the last one is star trails. Foucault pendulum is actually the best evidence of Earth's rotation. So you see here um, that we're showing a little cartoon version of this pole hanging with a string and a ball. 
If this ball is left to swing like a pendulum back and forth over the course of the day, it will appear to be moving um, around in a full circle over the course of the day. But actually, it's the earth that's moving beneath the, you know, beneath the ball, not the ball itself switching direction. So the pendulum appears to change direction, but the earth is actually rotating, turning under it instead. So here's earth again. They're showing the pendulum at the North Pole. And now we're looking directly down on the North Pole in this diagram on this side. We're looking down on the North Pole, and we're going to watch what happens as the pendulum swings. So they've placed a pen at the bottom of the pendulum to show how on paper it looks like the pendulum moved over the course of the day, when actually it's the earth that's spinning beneath it. So let's watch that one more time. Okay, so this drawing shows the path that's traced out by the swinging pendulum. So you can see over the day it ends up, you know, forming a full circle and a star formation as it swings beneath. So here's a picture of a pendulum um, that I just showed you. They, they have the, these in a lot of museums um, and also on some college campuses. This is the um, pendulum. As it swings back and forth, it will hit this little pin that's sitting on the side. Um, just to show how the Earth is spinning beneath it. So it's kind of cool. It, it can also be used to show time. Star trails. Star trails, if you take a camera and take a picture every minute, every few minutes over the course of 24 hours um, facing towards the North Pole, and you put all of those pictures onto one photograph, you'll end up with this, this type of formation here. We have all these circular... Uh, paths shown um, of spinning around this one little point here. So e each of these paths is showing one particular star, okay, but it shows many stars and what happens over the course of one day. So are those stars all spinning around this point here? No, it's actually Earth that's rotating in that 24 hours. So what star do we think is going to be right here above the North Pole that everything's spinning around? That, of course, is Polaris, or our North Pole star. So star trails show that Earth rotates, and they also show that stars appear to move 15 degrees per hour. Why 15 degrees per hour? Again, the Earth is rotating 15 degrees per hour. What is revolution? So this is the other motion that Earth, um, Earth does. This is an orbit, which is the annual motion of a planet or a moon around what it's revolving around. And the Earth orbits or revolves around the sun. Our moon also orbits Earth, so the moon revolves around the Earth. So um, Earth's revolution takes one year, which is 365.25 days. 0.25, what is that 0.25 about? So if we have an extra quarter of a day that Earth is re revolving every year, Every four years, we've got one extra day to contend with, and that is when we add in that leap day. Every four years, we have a leap year, and we add in an extra day, February 29th. That's what that 0.25 is all about. How do we calculate Earth's rate of revolution? So we figure, again, Earth is going to revolve around the sun 360 degrees, and it takes 365 days, which if you divide that out, it works out to be about one degree per day that Earth revolves around the sun. How do we know that Earth revolves? So some of our proofs of Earth's revolution are changing seasons, changing constellations. So there are certain constellations. Constellations, of course, are groups of stars in the sky that people over time have kind of connected and made imaginary characters out of. Um, at different times of the year, we see different constellations, and this is because Earth is, Earth's axis is pointing towards different areas in our celestial sphere. And parallax. So our, you can see the Earth revolves around the sun, which changes our seasons, we learned, because of the tilt of Earth's axis. We see different constellations because the Earth's or, um, pointing towards different areas of the, of the sky. Um, so it shows different constellations visible throughout the year. Parallax is our last proof of Earth's revolution. This is when something seems to be um, shifted um, based on what's behind it. So if you look here, if we're in, this is Earth's revolution around the sun. If we're in this position here in June and we're taking a look at a star, 
At this time of the year, when you look at this star, it's going to appear to be behind these two stars. But then in December, when we're in this position, you look at that same star, and now it's got a whole different bunch of stars behind it. This is called parallax, where what's moving is actually you moving around, but it makes it look like what's in the background has shifted. Okay, so you'll see different views at different times of the year. Different constellations are viewed. Different um, objects seem to be behind, you know, closer stars than what's further. This is called parallax. So let's figure out which words go with which. Every time we see the rotation from the word rotation from now on, we're going to write day. And every time we see the word revolution, we're going to write year. So then when we're reading a question, we can figure out quickly which, which term it goes with. So let's think as we pull these up. So the first term is rising and setting of the sun. So that go with rotation or revolution. So remember, think rotation is day, revolution is year. So rising and setting of the sun goes with rotation. Very good. Rising and setting of the moon. Does this happen over the course of the day or of the year? And this, of course, is also the day, rotation. The seasons. Is that something that happens in a day or the year? This would be revolution, year. Changing constellations. Do they change in a day or in the year? And this goes with year, revolution. Movement of stars through the sky. Do they appear to move over the course of the day or the course of the year? And this also is rotation over the course of the day. And that's it for today. See you next time.